country will be presenting their works. And June 6th through the 9th, the Providence Parks Department will be hosting a grand weekend of the arts. See some of the best art from around the world. Call today for more information and remember, you can turn to NBC10 for your neighborhood news. Your week in review. Are changes in the works for the state training school changes that could save you money? News Channel 10 has learned of a plan to privatize the troubled institution. The big story concerns Butch Hobson. Charges of cocaine possession are filed against the ex-Red Sox player and manager. And for the 10th year in a row, thousands of children make a commitment to a drug-free life. Now more than ever, you can turn to News Channel 10. Now more than ever, you can turn to 10 weekends at 6 and 11. This week, Siskel and Ebert review scientists Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt flirting with death and destruction in Twister. Robert Mitchum puts a bounty on Johnny Depp in Dead Man. And Winona Ryder hides out in a prep school dormitory in the love story, Boys. <laughs> tornado-obsessed scientists encounters the windstorm of their dreams and nightmares in Twister, one of five new movies we'll be reviewing this week on Siskel and Ebert, along with Winona Ryder having an affair with a high school boy. Also, Julia Ormond and Tim Roth having an affair while he's on leave from prison, and Johnny Depp in a truly offbeat western. I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. Our first movie is Twister, a film about storm chasers on the trail of deadly tornadoes. As the movie opens, Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton play a couple who are on the edge of finalizing their divorce but still share one crucial thing in common, an obsession with tornadoes. He only went to see her to get her to sign the divorce papers, but a big storm front comes through, and here they are chasing twisters again. Are you mad? I'll be mad later. Right now, I'm trying not to kill us. A lot of the scenes in the movie look more or less like this, and I guess you aren't supposed to question how they miraculously seem to escape serious injury, even while they're in the eye of one storm after another. Mike, to grab a hold of. I know! Yeah. 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 Not on tornadoes, they're cleaning up after them. For example, when Helen Hunt's aunt, played by Lois Smith, has to be rescued from her home. Okay, ready? Watch your hand, watch your hand. Go! Let's go! Oh, oh. Easy, 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 oh. easy. Get down! Oh, oh good! Oh. The best thing in the movie are the great special effects. In fact, they're about the only thing in the movie. I'll say this about Twister, you get your money's worth in the special effects department. Twister starts out with a tornado and keeps on throwing tornadoes at us for 117 minutes. I felt like I had spent an eternity in weathercaster hell. In between, there's a silly plot involving Paxton being caught between his first wife and his current fiance, but with Twisters arriving every 20 minutes, who cares? At one point, the fiance just gives up. There's a great line where she says, when you told me you chased tornadoes, I thought that was a metaphor. Well, if so, it would have been the only one in this movie. I admired the special effects in Twisters, but 
Not enough to recommend the rest of the film. I had the same reaction, Roger. It is a ridiculous story surrounding the Twisters. Now think about it for a second. <laughs> you're, far you're, you're making this movie. Yeah. You're farming out the special effects to ILM, yeah. Industrial Light and Magic, the best special effects house in the world. Yes. You know they're going to be great. Yes. So why not take your time and write a fresh story, yes. something exciting uh -huh. around it? It shouldn't be too great a challenge. This cornball business of the marriage that's going to you know, come together as they fight the Twisters and then toss away the other wife. And then the rivalry between two groups, one in black oh, yeah. cars and no, the other in the bad guys. Cars. The bad guys have corporate sponsors. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ridiculous. You know, and, and the Lois me, Smith, the old person in a movie, only there to be a victim. Yeah, I mean, and and here's on. another thing, Gene. Remember the invention they have called Dorothy? Yeah. Which is going to have, they have these little spheres little. that have sensors inside okay. that will be sucked up into the tornado right. and be able to read it. It looks like R2-D2, doesn't and then, it? Yeah, and then when they have to get it out of the pickup truck, two people can lift it yes. easily. That's interesting. And then I realize all the blinking lights are just window dressing. Basically, this is a garbage can right. filled with little plastic things that the tornado is going to suck up. Unbelievable. Next movie. <laughs> Our next film is called Captives. Do we have any time for any more movies on the show? It's a rather intense and effective love story set in a prison. A visiting dentist, played by Julia Orman from the Sabrina remake, is attracted to the danger and pent-up sexuality in a prisoner she treats at the prison, played by the superb actor Tim Roth. I'm open. Close. Open. Close again. Temporary mandibular joint dysfunction. I was just saying that to the boys. Breaking the rules, she decides to come back to the prison on visiting day, disguising herself with different clothes and hairstyle. And now he pushes the affair by probing her with the questions of a desperate but very observant man. We split up. Same here. Have you told her that? What has happened? She told me. That's what made it easier, easier asking you. Uh, is that what this is? Practice. The affair develops during his regular furloughs, but then she looks up his crime in old newspapers and discovers violence in his past. You said you split up! That's what you told me! You split up! You really are you want with feelings! These are two very good performances, certainly Julia Orman's best work when she can keep up with Tim Roth. And what I like about this film is that it's played pretty smart. These are clever, frustrated characters, and we're always left to wonder who is really using whom here and for what purpose and whether their passion contains any love. I like the genuinely achieved tension in Captives and I give it a positive review. I do too, Gene. I liked it very much, and it reminded me of the movie Damage. In both yes. cases, you have characters Obsession. who are obsessed on a sexual level that seems to play to such deep needs within each person yes. that really it's not the relationship that counts, it's the obsession that counts. And in each yeah. case, you have wounded people. She's very mad at her husband. Yes. He cheated on her. Right. She wants to get even, and that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah, also, again, you know, I feel like a broken record about t writing characters at the top mm -hmm. of their... T mm -hmm. You do not sense at any time that they're in a movie dumbing it down. No, you don't. These are credible people. Uh, it, it seems real, and, um, and it's an equal battle. Mm -hmm. It's not the man is the initiator and the woman is some sort of uh, second-level person. Good film. I agree. When we come back, with Winona Ryder and Boys, the story of a night of concealment and discovery. I'm in some trouble. Did you kill someone? People routinely travel to places in search of comfort, peace, and quiet. We ask ourselves, why can't such a place be a car? The Maxima, from Nissan. What did I tell you? What? 
You give the card to your mom, and what does she do? She loved it. She flips it over to look at the back. Come on, everybody flips their card over. It's your mother. That's where you get it from. It must be a genetic thing. You need to flip. My mother doesn't need to flip the card over. It's just her way of letting me know that she knows that I know, you know? It is okay to look for the hallmark on the back of a card. In fact, you might want to do it before you buy one. So there's some sort of secret agreement between women that it's okay? Ah, oh, you're on to us. Yeah, yeah. You know what to look for in a Mother's Day card. Hallmark. You said we'd get them next time. Well, here it is. Game seven, world championship. Game sold out, of course, except for two tickets some radio station's giving away. Two courtside in-your-face tickets. And they're dialing your number. Your number, baby. But you, you quit treating your high blood pressure. You had a stroke. You're dead. No tickets, no next time. This isn't just a gym. Look at what it does. It changes lives. This isn't just a coach. This coach helps build muscles, self-esteem. This isn't just a ball. It improves concentration, teamwork. This isn't just a sport. It's the way we train for life. What's your name? Uh, Louise. Murphy, get the hell out of here. Are you hungry? She's not hungry. Do you live around here? Leave her alone. You leave her alone, dude. That's Winona Ryder as a 20-something woman with a secret in Boys, a new movie that combines Love on the Run with a pale version of Before Sunrise, that wonderful 1995 film about two young people who talked all night on their first date. As Boys opens, Ryder is questioned by the police about a missing car and its driver. Then she goes horseback riding, is thrown by her horse, and found by some boys at a nearby prep school. A younger student runs to an older one, played by Lucas Haas, for help. And Haas finds Ryder bloodied unconscious and sneaks her into his prep school where he tries to keep her a secret. Hey, what are you doing in here so secret? Nothing. You building a tunnel or something? No, I got a girl knocked out in the back of the dorm and I can't bring her up here until I get you guys out of the way. <laughs> yeah, and your dreams. Ryder and Haas begin to talk and grow to like and trust one another, so they leave the prep school and head for that always dependable backdrop in any movie that doesn't know where to go, a nearby Carnival Midway. There's people around here, Larry. Be careful. What do you mean? What are you doing? You started it. I didn't start it. Meanwhile, there's a secret in Ryder's recent past, and it leads to a climax that's as contrived as it is unnecessary. It provides the movie with nothing that it needs and really has nothing to do about the relationship, which would turn out the same if none of that stuff was there. Well, you know, normally you can go to the bank on Winona Ryder. Yes, she can. has a marvelous track record. She probably is the most talented young actress around. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, this is not worthy of her talent. All I did was stare at her beauty, mm -hmm. which is what the character does, <laughs> the other uh, Lucas Haas character does, and basically you, you sit and wait around for them to have sex, and that's it. Yeah. I kept waiting because of her presence for something extra. There is a little extra, as you mentioned, in, in the film, but at the end of the film, but that's just a secret. And it is know, not textural. Gene, you know it's a cliche to talk about gratuitous sex, but the sex in this movie sure is gratuitous. Of course, that's the whole purpose Why of the movie. Why in the world? Are they having sex? Who are they? Who do they think each other is? Why do well, they like each other? Well, we know why he other? is. We know why he is because he's an adolescent boy in a prep school, yeah, and so this is exciting. Yeah, what is she exciting. thinking? Yeah. Well, okay. When we come back, a strange new western as a timid young man encounters a soulful American Indian and the violence of the Old West. Johnny Depp stars in Dead Man next. Just off Route 6 in New Bedford, you'll find a true piece of Americana. Step up to the counter. Good morning. They're waiting for you at Angelo's Orchid Diner. Whether it's for the food, the service, or a friendly smile, customers keep coming back for more. It's like News Channel 10 Sunrise. Frank Coletta and Art Lake have been in the business of serving Southern New Englanders for years. Folks look forward to getting your morning news with a salute and a smile. News Channel 10 Sunrise. Like diners all over Southern New England, mornings wouldn't be the same without it. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Charlie Jeffords. You know, one of Rhode Island's greatest resources is its caring people, and Tom Tannery is one of those people. He's working again this year to coordinate the annual VIP campaign, the major fundraiser for United Cerebral Palsy. Thank you, Charlie. This year, we have another wonderful team of very interested people who will be calling you to help reach our financial goals. To contact a VIP or make a direct donation, please call UCP at 728-7800. Board the bus with the News Channel 10 investigators, but watch out, this ride may get bumpy. The Public Transit Authority is getting a job here based on who you know? Rip to high is the best possible candidate for the job. The hiring practice and the nepotism in this company is unbelievable. Why are top executives getting raises when Rift is in a financial crisis? Right now it's being run into the ground. Diana Couch and Bob Ward investigate. Ripta in need of repair? Monday at 6 on NBC News Channel 10. So would it be presumptuous of me to ask you for... for your autograph? That's the fine young actor Johnny Depp in a new film called Dead Man from the independent filmmaker Jim Jarmusch. And let me tell you something about my reaction to this movie. After the film was over, I asked the projectionist to play the last half of it again. I can't say that I got it until the second viewing. Set in the 1870s, it's the story of a gentle young accountant from Cleveland who goes west in search of a job. And his face, as played by Johnny Depp, is a face of openness and peace. As the black and white film opens, his character, named William Blake, goes to the town of Machine, remember that name, and fails to get a job, but is befriended by a woman who takes him to bed. And his life is changed forever after he interacts with her jealous boyfriend, played by Gabriel Byrne. Well, I never really loved you anyway. No, Charlie. William ends up killing that man in self-defense, and it enrages the leading citizen of the town of Machine, Byrne's father, a crass industrialist, played by no less than Robert Mitchum in a rare cameo role. I want him brought here to me. Alive or dead don't matter, though I reckon dead would be easier. I'm hiring you boys on an exclusive basis, and I'm willing to pay more money than you've ever seen before. On the run, William encounters a fascinating character next, an Indian who speaks English, always in epigrams. He's played memorably by Gary Farmer. I cannot stop the clouds by the building of a ship. What? Did I enjoy Dead Man? Well, mostly I enjoyed staring at it in the best sense, at the black and white images you know, by the great cinematographer you know, Robbie Mueller, and then at this sense. friendship You're between the more. white man and the Say Indian. More. Maybe the best way I can describe it, it's like it plays in a deadpan natural way as if somebody from the 1990s time traveled and dropped a video camera in the Old West with a very extended play <laughs> tape, and then picked it up maybe a year later. What would have been recorded? maybe something like Dead Man. Well, I think you did a real good job of reviewing this movie because I had some of the same feelings. Now, I'm not recommending the film. Uh -huh. I have seen it twice myself. Yeah. It just didn't engage me and it didn't move me. And yet, as an exercise, let's say in a film class somewhere, yeah. the energy in the scenes between Johnny Depp and Gary Farmer is really fresh and interesting. The cinematography is good. The attempt to show the right. Old West as it shows it right. is very interesting. Somehow, it doesn't come together, but it's a noble effort. Well, that, that's kind of what I had the first time, Roger. That was the first, mm -hmm. I said, you know, why, am I, why aren't I more involved with it? And I guess yeah. it was a technical, I stood apart from it. Mm -hmm. The second time through, and, and mine was right afterward, because mm -hmm. I felt like, am I missing something, that, that yeah. emotional uh -huh. connection? Mm -hmm. Then... I started to put all the elements together, and I saw it of a piece. I saw a sensibility behind it. So n am I rooting for anybody? No. But am I observing the Old West from a contemporary point of view? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I one, am. One more footnote. Neil Young's music. Beautiful. It got on my nerves. Oh, really? It was that same discordant sound, that, that machine-made sound, over and over Didn't and over. Didn't bother me at all. Okay, when we come back, a sly British comedy named Cold Comfort Farm. Sets. You joined the well. There's a neighbor missing. And then the raccoons ate our food and we all got poison ivy. And that was my vacation. We drive and drive and drive some more. And that was my vacation. After I went to 
a haunted mansion, I traveled into the future and hung out with famous movie stars. And then I was attacked by aliens, got caught in a tidal wave, and went all the way to China. Is that all, Billy? <laughs> no, but the rest is kind of hard to believe. Call 1-407-W-DISNEY and make the dream come true. People routinely travel to places in search of comfort, peace, and quiet. We asked ourselves, why can't such a place be a car? The Maximum, from Nissan. Stella Gibbons' Cold Comfort Farm is one of the most loved of modern British comic novels, and now it's been made into a sly, high-spirited, weirdly lovable period comedy by John Schlesinger. As the movie opens, a young woman named Flora Post has been orphaned and left nearly penniless. She discusses her prospects with a friend and finally decides her best hope is to throw herself on the mercy of her relatives. We're not like other folk, maybe, but there have always been stark adders at Cold Comfort Farm. But stop it. And we will do our best to welcome Robert Post's child. Child, child, if you come to this doomed house, what is there to save you? Your cousin, Judith Starkadder. That's Judith Kate Starkadder. Beckinsale as the plucky it orphan and Joanna Lumley as her confidant. The farm is under the thumb of an ancient matriarch named Ada Doom and played by Sheila Burrell. They know her rants and raves by heart. But Flora Post is determined to bring some optimism and cheerfulness to this grim backwater. Well, well. The gang's all here, isn't it? I don't suppose there are any sandwiches. Flora even turns up an American film producer who may be looking for a leading man like her muscular cousin, Seth. Uh, so you're a fan, sweetheart. <laughs> you and me should get acquainted, huh? Maybe you thought of being in the movies yourself. Cold Comfort Farm doesn't have a serious thought in its head. It's delightfully satirical in its portrait of a gloomy, gothic matriarchy. And Kate Beckinsale does a wonderful job with the role of Robert Post's child, as they always refer to her. You're Robert Post's child. As she makes the best of a bad situation and blasts her way through her depressing surroundings. This is a movie that depends on just the right balance between satire and human comedy and finds it. It's a splendidly high-spirited entertainment. Well, what I like about it so much is that there is no way that you can predict from scene to scene, unless you've memorized the book, uh -huh. uh, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It is, you're, it's discovering. She's discovering this new place in her life. Mm -hmm. We discovered along with her. It has that, that whole pace to it. And also, I'm really glad that John Schlesinger is back as a director. Here he won the Oscar for Midnight Cowboy, Sunday Bloody Sunday. He's had a marvelous career. He's sort of fallen on bad times. I didn't think we would see as good a film from him, and, and in an original move, I think, for him, uh, just great. Yeah, and Kate Beckinsale, as this character, uh, Robert Post's child, when she gets to this farm, you expect that you know what's going to happen. Oh, it's really gloomy. She's going to either get depressed or rebel or run away or there'll be something. Right. And instead, she just accepts her lot. Okay, here I am. Let's go to work on this. Let's see how right. we can help people out here. And she just takes control of everybody's it, lives. It's a really marvelous picture. Coming up next, the preview of the Cisco and Ebert interview special to be broadcast next week. Interviews with Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep, Steven Spielberg, and Brad Pitt. That's next. Did I tell you? What? You give the card to your mom and what does she do? She loved it. She flips it over to look at the back. Come on, everybody flips their card over. It's your mother. That's where you get it from. It must be a genetic thing. You need to flip. My mother doesn't need to flip the card over. It's just her way of letting me know that she knows that I know, you know? It is okay to look for the hallmark on the back of a card. In fact, you might want to do it before you buy one. So, there's some sort of secret agreement between women that it's okay? Ah, oh, you're hot to us. Yeah, yeah. You know what to look for in a Mother's Day card. Hallmark. Well, we're here with tropical fish dealer Rudy Laszlo, who thinks his zipper bags are fine and won't switch to Gladlock zipper bags. That's correct. Uh, Rudy, what do you say we drop these piranhas here into your little fish heaven? Nope, 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 nope. Sealed in either your bag or the Gladlock bag with the yellow and blue make green seal, which means the bag is closed. Your bag doesn't have a green seal. These are my little friends. Use the Gladlock. When it really counts, get Gladlock. Can you hear that? They're applauding you. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. It's here, the all-new 96 Pathfinder, with more style, power, and comfort than ever before. Hi, I'm John Conti. 
with three reasons why you should buy your new Pathfinder here at Smithfield Nissan. One, selection. We have New England's largest Pathfinder inventory to choose from. Two, price. Our volume buying saves you money and I guarantee it. Three, service. We have a complete staff of factory trained technicians. So, for the ultimate in four-wheel drive luxury, stop in and see me, John Conti, at Smithfield Nissan, Route 116, Smithfield. Too many times I've heard people say, it's not my business, it's not my problem, as they stand by and watch someone engage in child abuse. You don't pick up a phone if you don't say some, something to that person that's abusing that child, then you are part of the problem. The Century Plaza, offering the finest in luxury service in Southern California style, adjacent to Beverly Hills on L.A.'s fashionable west side. The Century Plaza Hotel and Tower, a Western hotel. Welcome back. This Wednesday evening on primetime television, Roger and I will be presenting a one-hour special consisting of our interviews with four top talents in American movies today. And a preview for you, here's the way the actual show is going to open. You say you were waiting for the number seven bucks. There was that school of thought that said, why in the world are we celebrating this idiot on a park bench? Tom Hanks is everybody's favorite good guy. But will he ever break the mold? I won't play the Unabomber when that time comes. When a T-Rex eats a person sitting on a toilet, I promise you it's not personal. Steven Spielberg is the most successful movie maker in history. Over the past 20 years, he's given us all a few nightmares. But what frightens him? It was scary for me because my heart was beating. I didn't know what he wanted to do. He wouldn't tell me. They're always lying and wait for me to have an accident. Meryl Streep is America's leading lady, but 20 years ago, she was almost forced out of drama school. I was put on academic probation for a lack of ambition. I'm a hick, redneck from Missouri. I'm trying to beat the mirror, you know, so I'm going. You know, that whole, that look. The looks. The attention, the success. In his first major television interview, Brad Pitt tries to figure out why him, why now. There was that feeling as a kid that you were being prepared for something big. That's all I have to say about that. The Siskel and Ebert interviews airs Wednesday night during prime time. If you want to see Tom Hanks tease Roger about his review of Splash, Meryl Streep challenged my interpretation of a scene in The Bridges of Madison County. If you want to see Brad Pitt's first primetime TV interview ever, the Siskel and Ebert interviews is the place. Check out your local listings, and now let's recap the movies we reviewed on this show. Two thumbs down on Twister. Only the special effects work in a predictable story that teaches us actually absolutely nothing about tornadoes. Two thumbs up for Captives, a tense love story between a convict and a visiting dentist. Two thumbs down for Boys, a film that's not much more than an adolescent sexual tease, not really worth the talented Winona Ryder. A split vote on Dead Man, the offbeat western by Jim Jarmusch. I liked watching what happens to this innocent in the Old West. Roger felt the film didn't add up to that much or engage him emotionally. Finally, two thumbs up for the delightful Cold Comfort Farm, marking the return of director John Schlesinger to top form. So, Cold Comfort Farm is the film we really like. And Captives. And I like Dead Man a little bit. Okay, that's it for this week. Next week, we'll be back with reviews of more new movies, including Heaven's Prisoner, starring Alec Baldwin as a retired New Orleans detective who finds himself thrown back into dangerous intrigue. And Flipper with Ooh. TV's favorite dolphin. That's next week, and until then, the balcony is closed. Great tasting Xylofresh 100 sugar free gum with Xylitol. Clinically proven to have more cavity fighting power than ordinary sugar free gum. Xylofresh 100. The Lidman Wonder Mop. Extra dry with a twist. The Money Store specializes in helping homeowners who are behind on their mortgage and other loans to establish a new budget with one loan, one H2.